Hello everyone and welcome to Mass Analytics Masterclasses where we will be sharing with you very useful tips when it comes to running your marketing mixed modeling project end to end. Today's session will be about prediction or forecasting or simulation. In the previous course we have seen how optimization works and we looked at the importance of considering the diminishing return curves when it comes to allocating your budget and we have also prescribed a specific process that we advise you to go through in order to make sure that the results of your optimizations are sound and robust. In this course, we will take you through the prediction process and we will also be taking you through an illustration of the above. Remember, the pyramid of marketing mix models that starts with the measurement layer followed by the prediction, forecasting and optimization. So actually prediction is a key component in the delivery of insight and recommendation to your client. And again, remember the principle of garbage in and garbage out that I talked about last time. So if your measurement, if your model is not robust, there is no way that your prediction, your simulation will give sound results. So please make sure that your model makes sense both statistically and commercially, before you move on creating forecasting and simulation scenarios on the basis of those models. Looking at the marketing mix modeling workflow, we are actually at the last step, which is the deployment stage. As explained before, that stage is really, really important because that's where we'll be using the results that we have extracted from the model in order to drive the business. In master, the one-stop platform that helps you run your marketing mix modeling project end-to-end, -end. there is a dedicated module, PREDICT, that helps you run all your forecasting and all your simulations. Prediction process. So the process of prediction goes as follows. First step, create your model. The more robust is your model, the better will be your prediction. Needless to say, how important for you to look at the level of your T-stats the robustness of your measures, because if you do not have a robust model to start with, the results that you will get from the prediction will be wrong and misleading. So that's why the first step is to ensure that the model presents high robustness, which means that your t-stats and your p-value are at their best. Second will be to get a scenario plan. Generally, the scenario plan will come from the business. The marketing director, the media planner, or the client, or whoever is interested in evaluating the outcome specific scenario. So in that scenario, you will have the levels of activities that your client or the business is intending to invest in. Your job would be to take the model coefficients as estimated through your robust model and apply them to the scenario plan in order to predict how much sales you will be gaining or you will be getting when you follow that scenario plan. How does prediction work behind the scenes? The starting point, as we mentioned earlier on, is the creation of a robust model. And then you need to have a scenario plan from the business. And your job would be to tell the business how much sales you will get as a result of implementing that investment plan. Now, say, for example, in that investment plan, you want to double your TV activity. First, you need to decide which model you will be using. As part of your MMM exercise, you could have ended up with different models. You need to decide on the final model that you'll be using for prediction. Criteria of choice include, obviously, robustness, which means that, again, your T-stat and your P-value should be at their correct values in order to make sure that the prediction is accurate. Once we do that, what happens really in the background, because in the scenario plan, you have your raw variables. What the prediction will do, it will transform the variables following the same transformation that has been applied to your raw variables in order to mimic those patterns. And then after that, it will be using the coefficients that have been estimated through the model and apply them to the investment plan. And by adding all those together, will be capable of forecasting the level of sales that will be achieving as a result of doubling your TV spend. In other terms, we have estimated our coefficients based on historical data. Now, what the scenario plan will tell me is that what will be my decisions when it comes to investing? And based on those investments, I'll be using my knowledge that I have gathered through the estimation of coefficients in the estimation phase in order to predict my sales. 
So that's actually how prediction works. So use your model, use your knowledge, you use your history and what you have learned from your model in order to understand or predict how your customers will behave if you change the different levels of your media and marketing activities. Illustration. In the following illustration, we would like to understand the outcome of two scenarios. The first one is actually the current one, where we did not change any investment in media and marketing. The second one, we have kept all the variables at the same level, but television. What we have done for television is that we decided double the budget and we want to know what will be the consequences of doubling the budget of television on sales. Running this through Master, which is the one-stop platform that allows you to run all your marketing mix modeling project end-to-end, -end, we were capable of obtaining the following results. When we double the TV budget, the contribution that is gained from television only increases by 30%. See here, Doubling the budget of television did not result in doubling the contribution that is sourced from TV. Why is that? Because TV has a component of diminishing returns that has been built into it. Remember, in the optimization course, we talked about the importance of building diminishing returns on every single media activity you have. Now, if you look at overall sales, doubling TV spent resulted in increasing total sales by 1.6%. So what you can now do, you can go to your manager and say, you know what, if we decide or if we implement double the budget of television compared to the current one, we'll be capable of increasing our revenue by 1.6% and actually the contribution that comes from television will increase by 30%. So this is actually how prediction works. Historical data is used to understand and estimate the relationship between a set of independent variables and a dependent variable. This knowledge that we gather through historical data could be used in order to predict the outcome of different scenario plans. The idea of prediction is that the manager could come with different investment scenarios and they want to know which one is the best to implement. Using the equation that you have created, that you made sure that is robust, you can easily predict the outcome that will be generated by the implementation of each of those scenarios. Not only this, but you will also be capable of comparing the outcome across all of them and advise on the best plan to follow in order to grow the brand and help the business. It's been my pleasure to take you through this end-to-end -end marketing mix modeling journey where I really try to share with you most of the tips that I have learned over my experience running multiple marketing mix modeling projects across many international brands and many industries and verticals. This is now the end of season one, as I mentioned, composed of eight courses. I really invite you to explore every one of them because each one is a key component to succeed your marketing mix modeling project. Thank you for your interest. Stay tuned. Season two coming soon. Thank you.